Part 11G The Sophit and You The bride to wife having heard, obeyed, and now marked as one delivered, having crossed over the threshold. This is going to be a very long lesson. You may want to take a break in the middle and then come back to it later. In Lesson 10e, we discuss the Sophit as pertaining to the spiritual and the material. In Lesson 10f, we took a slight detour and spoke of heart-brain coherence. By the way, did you do the quick coherent steps before this lesson? Just curious. Now let's get back to it so we can finish up with the word Sophit. This word is from the Hebrew word, root word, suf, which has several meanings. First, to snatch away, terminate, and have an end. Next, it also means a reed, especially papyrus. Papyrus is a crude form of paper which is made with the stalks of the papyrus plant. The term papyrus can also simply refer to a document written on sheets of such material joined together side by side and rolled up into a scroll, an early form of a book. Papyrus is the blank canvas in which words are written on in order to communicate ideas and things of importance. The living word therefore came to write on living papyrus. These are the living letters that form the words to communicate ideas of importance to us as living vessels. If we were not metaphoric papyrus, then how could he write his law on our heart? We must become papyrus so his words can be written upon and with us. It's interesting to note that one of the first phases of making papyrus is that the plant itself needs to be soaked in water for three days. Lastly, the word sophit also contains the parent root word saf which is a vestibule as a limit, also a dish for holding blood or wine. This speaks of the threshold covenant. Here, in this picture, we see this word manifested as the threshold into a building. The bowl and basin has been carved out to serve a specific purpose regarding the threshold covenant. As an ancient covenant, this was a declaration of what God your house was serving. Individuals would perform an animal sacrifice to their pagan god and pour some of the blood into the basin in the threshold and then partake of the meat. As you entered into their home, you would essentially agree to the god they served. This ritual was essentially attached to the blood covenant carrying the hallmark, submission, and obedience to that particular god. This is what the first Passover was all about. So the question could be, why did the Hebrews put the blood on the door and not in basins? You may think perhaps because their thresholds may not have had basins, and this may be true. However, I believe it goes much deeper than that. It is in relation to the door. Who is God over your temple and body? John 10 says this, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up, on other, up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Back to verse chapter or, uh, John 10, verse 4. And when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, 
he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep, but the hiredling, a hired man, is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming and leaves. The sheep, the fleas, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and I am known by my own. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4 These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from men, firstfruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. In following the shepherd, the 144,000 have gone through the door of the threshold covenant, declaring their submission and obedience to the Father. We will see that the Sophit will speak many things to us, but first, let's look at the parent root, Saf. We need to put together with the unified constituent letters married with the Strong's definition in order to get a fuller interpretation, not exhaustive. Those who have gone through the threshold covenant by entering into the door are those for whom are wed. They have taken hold of that which they lean upon as a place of support that props them up as they are hedged in as if with thorns that are sharp and will pierce the place of the shield and wall that surrounds and protects. They have been given the mouth to speak and bring forth the dual revelation. This word is static, containing the information of the heart of the Father, but needs to be moved into action. This comes from the piercing of the Vav, which is at the heart level. Now we have Suf. This interpretation is now to those who have been pierced in the heart as humble standing ones, they will be snatched away at the end as they've become the living scrolls. And finally, we have the additional Yod Tav added to the suffix. I will be adding the meaning of these letters to the full but non-exhaustive interpretation. Those who have gone through the threshold covenant by entering into the door are those whom are wed. They have taken hold of that which they lean upon as a place of support that props them up as they are hedged in as if with thorns that are sharp and will pierce, a place of the shield and wall that surrounds and protects. They have been given the mouth to speak and bring forth dual revelation. Now, as they have been pierced in the heart, they are the humble standing ones who are the living scrolls and will be snatched away at the end. Vision was imparted to them, giving them power, means, and direction that they needed by going through the door of revelation, receiving the water from the deep well that delivered them. The end of their journey is empowered to do so, as one who is marked with the sign of the Father's covenant. They are sons and daughters of God, and they are connected to him, as those who are pierced to become hum humble, standing, meek sovereigns. That is the end of that interpretation. I would suggest that these are the 144,000 who have lifted everything above the line, above the line of demarcation as separated from those who do not receive the mark of the Father.
This mark is intended for those who have chosen to do the Father's will, to become holy as He is holy through the activity of life. Depending on what you have brought into your vessel, your cup, or papyrus just may be too full. Too many words from other sources other than source can make it almost impossible for him to write upon you with the living words. As a child, you are a blank canvas, a blank papyrus, full of trust with a heart positioned to learn and to be written upon. Again, this is why we must enter in as a little child in order to be raised up in the way we should have gone, but is as difficult as a camel passing through an eye of a needle, a literal gate, not a needle for sewing, if approached later on in life. A child is poor and destitute requiring assistance in every aspect, where one who has grown up physically appears to be rich and having need of nothing. The challenge in making room for new ideas, new ways of thinking and doing, so that you can become what has always been intended, so that you can not miss the mark. This may mean that you need to empty some of the things out so that you can be teachable in order to be filled up to overflowing. First Corinthians 3 verses 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles or destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which you are. The blood covenant is about obedience and submission. So when we say we are covered by the blood, are we being obedient in submitting to the will of our Father in heaven? It is interesting to note that if we had done things differently, saving ourselves from marriage when intimacy first happens, blood is shed. And then children are created out of that shedding of blood. Parents who will raise their children in the way they should go, obedient to the Father's commandments, submitting to their authority as to be set apart from the rest of the world by becoming the Bayit Mik Dasham, the sacred and holy place as the temple. Bayit, the temple that has been empowered in order to be spiritually built and marked through the covenant, becoming holy and set apart as dedicated and consecrated through the mother and father's teachings. Let's look at the Hebrew word for blood. This is the word dam. The door of the teacher of light that brings the revelation of the covenant from a deep well in order to deliver you the teachings of the mother and father so you can come through the waters of chaos and be born again. We're going to land the plane by circling back around and ending with Passover. Mother and father are to teach the child the way it should go, but it all starts with submission and obedience. Even the animal kingdom understands this. Passover for us today is not about the sacrificing of sheep, but from the original intent of the word spiritually, without actual bloodshed. Yes, you must sacrifice by killing or dying to self, the selfish nature which is beast-like, but more importantly, it is submitting and entering into the teachings of mother and father as a twofold process. Life after death, eternal life, comes from the place of becoming. We know that life is in the blood, but let the dead bury the dead. It is going through the door of mother and father that makes one marked with the blood, their teachings, and then walking 
in the way that you should go as one who is marked with the dom, the blood, having gone through the door of their teachings where they learn and are submissive and obedient as humble and teachable ones. This might be a good time for you to take a little break and then resume the rest of the teaching once you've had a moment to just maybe make a cup of tea or uh, process the previous slides. We will resume in a moment. <laughs> 